Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Line Equipment. And today in front of us, we have Fragile. How's that? Really, it's fragile. We really have inside this box is the Bezerra or Betzera Hobby Espresso Machine for your home or small office. And we're gonna be going in detail over this machine. A few years ago, uh, and I just found these in the warehouse, I tend to walk around the warehouse and I find things that show up that I don't even know about. And we have this nice shirt uh, that had come in quite some time ago from Betzera, uh, and or Bezerra. And hopefully they see this video and they correct me on the correct pronunciation because I say it three different ways. So, uh, and I find all that are legit, but it's a great family owned company uh, that started in 1905. It's actually, uh, a competition between another company and Betsida in who's the oldest and we deal with both so we can't get involved in the middle of that argument with them but uh, we're gonna go over that today but they gave us nice shirt it says the Arcadia uh, we're gonna be going over that machine pretty soon too because we do have one in stock and it's a fabulous machine but today is the hobby now we've removed the staples already if your machine comes with staples Please remove the staples first, because when you go pull out the machine, guess what happens? You scratch the body. I've asked my staff here to remove the staples, but in case they forget, because they're too busy, just remove the staples first. You may end up ripping the box, and that's okay. We don't ship in this box, okay? A couple things. We here at First Line open up every box. We inspect it for any damages in case the machine got damaged coming to us. Uh, which usually comes in by containers from uh, Italy or other countries for other manufacturers. Uh, we also make sure we don't have any damages that occur inside our facilities. Uh, and then we usually add some extra packaging material. It's one of the things I'm really big here at First Line is to make sure when the machine leaves here, it's leaving in good order and arriving to you in good order. So very important. If you find the box broken, my staff did it, nothing to worry about. What's more important is the machine. Inside, we have the instruction manual. They have also nice cups. These are not included with the purchase, but take a look. These are fabulous cups by them. You have a little cardboard here. You may find a piece of foam. They may change that. Uh, we may take it out and put our own foam, which seems to be better. Now, this machine was used for photography. Oh, so this machine is a little on the heavy side. Okay, it, it, it's a well-built machine. Well worth the money. And uh, if you see that I'm a little antsy today, the reason is because I got some new tight shoes on that I'm kind of stretching out. So if you see that, please pardon my shoes. Not showing them to you either. Okay, here we go. Satin finish. Cord, not detachable in the back. Reservoir lid, not removable. Okay, you'll see a particle filter in here. Extended hose. Get a detachable water softener. Our code is V725. Get it for this machine. It will reduce your problems by 90%. 90, over 90% 90 of the problems that occur in our machines are lime scale caused by your water. Okay, removable reservoir. Wash this with dishwash soap, nothing abrasive on the inside and no dishwasher safeness on this or any other component on any espresso machine. Just a general rule of thumb. Um, general rule of thumb, not in thumb. If you have black mold, that builds up in your reservoir. Okay, a little bit of bleach mixed with water, sit it overnight, should go away, rinse it well, it's still gonna have a bleach smell. So then you need to put some uh, vinegar in there, white vinegar, that'll neutralize the, the smell and then rinse it again. You may have to take a day or two to do it. So if you wash it every two weeks, you shouldn't have black mold, but if you do, it's your environment. Okay, again, all stainless. Stainless on the inside. This is a heavy machine. Okay, let's get this reservoir back in here. 
And the other thing that's nice, there's a little loop right here for your water softener for the V725. So they've even incorporated that into the reservoir. Now there is a little extra hole right here. Typically it's for machines that have a thin return hose. So that would go there. I would just stick both hoses in through the top. There's no cover here because the cover is here. Okay. Okay. There is no water or low water level uh, sensor that will shut the machine off. It runs low on water. So you kind of need to look here when the water level drops. It's a little difficult, I believe, here. The side would have been a little nicer, but putting it on the side can ruin or diminish the structural integrity of the frame. So there's pluses and minuses. I, when I talk to customers over the phone, I mentioned there's always trade-offs. Every machine has trade-offs. So by putting it here, you see it from the front, you don't have to look on the side. Putting it on the side, you might ruin the structural integrity a little bit. So it really depends. Now, drip tray. Okay, little difficult to get out, but that's the way it comes out. A little pet peeve of mine, actually two little pet peeves. Okay, if you see on the bottom of the drip tray, right there, there's a connection inside with a hose. Okay, I believe that is for either the OPV or the three-way solenoid valve. I th I'm pretty sure, I haven't looked inside yet, but I'm pretty sure it's for the three-way solenoid valve, which means if you take the drip tray out, it ain't gonna leak here because there's, there's a little valve right in there that's gonna close as soon as you lift it. And when you put it in, it basically opens it. But if you're operating without the drip tray, you may get some leakage here. So empty this out. It's a little bit on the small side. And let's see here, how's this work here? Let's see. That's your contraption for the bottom there. Okay, sometimes this comes with a white film on it. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the machine may come with a white film on it. Sometimes it doesn't. It all depends on the production facility. So that's one little pet peeve. Uh, this next one is my personal little pet peeve, but it may be uh, something that you may like. Me, I would put my cups on top. The cup warmers don't work on these uh, single boiler dual purpose machines. And when I say dual purpose, it means you have coffee mode and steam mode, but it takes like two to three hours to heat your cups up. So you're not leaving your machine off for two, three hours. If you use the hot water wand uh, or the steam wand for it, and as you can see, it's multi-directional on the steam one, and it does look like it's no burn, okay? So there is uh, tubing inside to make it uh, no burn. Now, why do, you, why do they put the rubber mount on or the protective device on these no burn wands? It doesn't mean that you can keep your hand on it. If you keep your hand on it, you're burning. It means that you can quickly touch and move it for a couple seconds, but if you keep your hand on it, you're burning yourself. So if you wanna hold it, you can hold it from the rubber mount. But this tray right here, uh, when I first saw the machine in Italy uh, at a trade show, uh, is something that I don't particularly care for. I think they could have extended the drip tray and made it bigger so it's less refilling, uh, well, less emptying, not refilling. But if you let it fill too much, you start building up fungus and mold in the drip tray. So again, trade-offs, okay? Smaller drip tray, more frequent cleaning, less fungal buildup. Uh, larger drip tray, more convenient, possibly more fungal buildup. The tray is plastic, which is nice. Again, not dishwasher safe, but uh, sometimes on stainless steel drip trays, you're going to get a little rusting or discoloration where the welds are. Now, what's the benefit of this tray back here? So, Because I, I gave it a lot of thought. And one of the benefits is cup storage. Okay, you didn't know I was going there, but I said, you know what? If you have two little demi test cups or shot glasses, that's a nice little tray in the front. You're not putting them up here, okay? Uh, you can, but you could put some up here and you could put some down here. Uh, so just something to uh, think about. You wanna put a steaming pitcher, you can. Maybe the steaming pitcher goes on the top and then putting the tray, drip tray back in, okay? Kind of got to push it in there uh, because it's got to make that connection on the inside. Uh, so 
we're gonna get started. We're gonna fill up the reservoir and we'll be right back to show you the machine. So we have the tank nice and full, actually about three quarters full. Put, set the tank in there, put the hoses in. And the first thing you don't wanna do is turn on the power. The reason is because the water, the machine can start heating before you get water from the reservoir to the internal boiler. And if that internal boiler gets too hot and it doesn't have water, the heating element can melt down or it could trip the safety thermostat. Uh, we don't wanna go there. So what I like to do is I like to open, okay? So there's a little symbol here. Uh, this way is tightening the valve, okay? And you don't wanna over tighten it. So you always close it till it uh, stops the water or the steam. But full open, we'll go there. We'll put a cup underneath, okay? And uh, let's hit that P button there. And actually we'll turn that on. And the first thing we want to do is get water into the boiler. And on the longer hose, what I'm going to do, listen, you hear the difference in the pump? That's to make sure that we know that water is getting from the reservoir through the pump into the boiler, out of the boiler, through the steam wand. When you get it through the steam wand, you know that it is full. Okay, we'll power that off. We'll close the valve. And the water is actually already a little bit warm, just to let you know. By doing this, we know that boiler is fill, filled internally. Uh, the other time you wanna do this is after steaming. Because after you steam, the water level drops in the boiler. And after steaming, say about one or two cups, between eight and 12 ounces, um, you wanna do the same process of running water through the steam wand to make sure that internal boiler is filled. That will diminish uh, problems that can occur in burning out the um, heating element or tripping the safety thermostat. Uh, while it's warming up, we're gonna go over a few things. We have our accessory box. We have our nice, okay, branded Bezerra portafilter, if you see ergonomically designed, but also when you put it on the counter, it's level for tamping, okay? Large two cup basket, I haven't measured it yet, but I'm gonna guess about 20 to, two, 20 to 22 grams because it is pretty deep. Ugh. I'll show you a little secret with that. Uh, inside here, we have our Conspiracy Tamper, uh, plastic tamper company. There's a conspiracy in Europe to provide you with one, so buy a better one because this is a piece of junk. 58 millimeter, okay? Get one of those. We have our blind or back flush insert for back flushing. Uh, so basically conversing with a customer in the last day about back washing or back flushing. Uh, you can do it without detergent once a day. It kind of keeps the dispersion screen clean, cleans it up on the outside, but also flushes out any coffee grinds that went back to the three-way solenoid valve. <coughs> and that's not a Corona cough, just to let you know, that's a regular allergy cough. Large single cup basket, another useless waste of uh, metal. Make it a paperweight. I don't like one cup baskets, but there are customers who do. We have our um, group head cleaning brush. So what happens is you make your espresso, uh, you might get some grinds that are on top. Uh, you wanna clean the gasket, uh, dime a dozen. These can last anywhere between three and six months. And you have your little accessory bag there. We'll put that on the side. I don't like to use the scoop when it comes to measuring uh, the amount of ground espresso coffee. But what I do like to use the scoop for, or the handle is, when you overfill the basket, I like to level the coffee in the basket without pushing it down. So some customers use this way. I, use the, I sometimes use a finger if I don't have one of these. But this is actually a good alternative tool because you can level. When you level the coffee in the basket, you're pretty much using the same amount of coffee every time. So I don't weigh it. I go by volume uh, in the coffee. Uh, we do have the instruction manual. I usually say in the beginning, read the manual. Bezerra has a decent manual, um, but there might be points that are missing. Uh, sometimes they're not as clear in the translation. So this video will certainly help you out. Uh, it is multilingual. Uh, 
I can only read one, which is English. Uh, they do mention a safety thermostat in here, cleaning the machine. Oh, regarding cleaning, no abrasives on the outside. What I, my secret is rubbing alcohol, terry claw towel, cleans it beautifully, okay? So that's my little secret. Our techs do that here. So read the manual uh, while the machine's warming up. And we have the green light on here. Now, how do we know the machine's hot? Okay, we feel that group head, it's piping hot. I can't keep my hand on it. When you are warming up the machine, portafilter has to be hot. So let's get that in there. Now, if you look, the machine does move. It's not a heavyweight, semi-commercial, prosumer machine. So like most home models under a thousand, you're gonna have to hold it. Now you may say, oh, the portafilter goes to about, mm, I don't know, if you're looking down, sometimes it'll be at 5.30, five o'clock, sometimes at six, 6.30. If your porta filter ends all the way like over here, you kind of need a new gasket for the for the group head. There's a gasket in here. The gaskets should be changed like every six to 12 months. There's customers who go two years. Uh, dispersion screen, same thing. Uh, people don't know this, but the dispersion screen, there's like a, a, a webbing that occurs with crisscross metal. And over time, it kind of bends out of shape and you don't get good dispersion of the water going through the puck. So we're gonna leave that in there. And then uh, we'll be right back because now I'm going to start removing the top cover because the machine's got to warm up the porta filter. So we'll be right back and I'll show you the insides of this fabulous hobby espresso machine. So this is a brand new machine. You can smell a little odor. When machines are fairly new, you're going to smell maybe a little burning smell. Now this machine is hot and live. So I don't recommend doing this when um, the machine is uh, plugged in. But if you look here, um, let's see what we have here. We have a three-way solenoid valve uh, here. And how do you know it's three-way? Uh, because there's a fitting here and there's two here. So that we have our ground right here. It is pretty tight and compact. This plate does come out. It looks like there's uh, screws that are holding this here. Uh, let me double check. Maybe the plate doesn't come out. Nope, the screws come out here. Uh, it is pretty tight in here, uh, but they do put some extra wiring in here. Our vibration pump is down here, okay? Uh, you have your connections here. Looks like we got some nickel plating on the boiler, which is really nice, so less exposure to brass and copper, uh, but there is still some brass here. So um, customers may say, oh, well, what about uh, lead and so forth? This is why one of the reasons why we tell customers not to descale the machines uh, because it exposes the finish. A lot of times the finish, even a coating of water can uh, cover those, but as soon as you descale, it kind of opens up uh, any type of uh, lead that can come through. So uh, down in there is your uh, boiler and there is a thermostat right here. And let's see if there's another thermostat somewhere. There's a thermostat right here with a red push button. That's your safety. So if the machine doesn't heat, unplug it, press that button down. If you feel a click, it means the safety trip probably due to lack of water. Now I do tell customers, that's not 100% foolproof. You could still burn out the heating element. Okay, the heating element wire is here and there's a thermostat there and there's actually one, okay, one of them is tucked down right down in there. So it is pretty tight. Now, if you want to get these switches out, there's little um, contraptions right here. I, I forget what to call them, but basically you got to press down on this and the switch comes forward. Take all pictures before you start removing anything. But everything is compact in here. Uh, let's see what is going down to, looking for what's going down into the drip tray. So here, this must be, this is water that goes into, whoo, yep, 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 yep. Water's coming through the boiler, through this three-way solenoid valve, through this hose, and then gets reheated as it goes through the center pipe of the boiler. So the three-way solenoid valve opens this up, and this goes, this hose from the three-way solenoid valve goes down beside the tank and into the drip tray. So I was right that the three-way solenoid valve 
uh, will open into the drip tray, not to the tank. And it's actually good because you don't want hot water or coffee grinds going back to the tank. Uh, the other hoses, looks like this is the OPV right here. First time I've seen this. And let's see what other hose we have in here. There's an well, intake and there's another one which down in here there's another hose there's an air release valve for, that basically helps with self priming and that self priming that's way down in here under the solenoid valve is actually a nice metal one with with the plating on it looks like the nickel plating uh, a lot of times on a lot of machines those are either plastic uh, the better ones are brass and this one's even better with the nickel plating so really really nice uh, it is a little tight in here but this is also a very compact machine that's, uh, you know, delivers a lot of power uh, to the punch. So uh, wiring is very good. I like the wiring. And let's see what else here. Uh, we have this hose that goes from the pump. So the boiler refill is this hose right here uh, that goes in through the side of the boiler. Comes out, uh, like I said, on the, this elbow right here goes through the solenoid valve so when you hit the coffee switch this opens up and then brings water through the center pipe and that goes straight down into the porta filter and gets dispersed let's get this back together and start making some espresso okay uh, i've already leveled with the scoop here uh the espresso coffee and then um again try to get a better tamper if you look here it doesn't cover the rim to the, to the edge so I prefer 58 millimeter. And then if you notice, I kind of like this kind of uh, height on the tamper base. So when I tamp, see my fingers? The rim here is to the rim here. So like this, if you have the same level of coffee, the same tamp every time, I'm not over pressurizing, then a little polish and then clean. And that tamp's gotta be level, not angled, okay? Uh, then the only thing you really have to change is your grind fineness. And this coffee is ground pretty fine. Um, and if you look here, these are the lips on the portafilter. So if you want to get a bottomless, you need to get ones that are there in one and seven. Uh, Faima and other brands will have uh, across this way, nine and three or three and nine. So we're going to load this in. Okay, and then again, with the tamper like this, you're going to have a good space for the dispersion screen. Let's take our cup, okay, put that underneath. Sometimes I like to preheat it, and then we'll press the coffee switch. Okay, the machine's been gone for a good 20 minutes. Uh, you could probably squeeze it in 10 to 15, but the longer the better. We'll hit the coffee switch. That is the vibration pump. The espresso should start coming out between five and seven seconds. Could be as low as, or as high as nine. Okay, now you might hear a little humming. That's the three-way solenoid valve. There's a lot of back pressure going on right now. And in this case, the grind is too fine. So as you can see, I don't uh, always preset. Like this, you can learn uh, from the mistakes. But if you look here, okay, that's a decent pour right there. Could be a little better. Okay, this is a long shot but it's very, very thick. Now people say, uh, customers say, uh, competitors say, you know, a certain timing. My rule of thumb, thumb is five to seven on the extraction to start from the time you hit the switch, 23 to 27 to get yourself two ounces. But at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is what tastes best. If you get a great tasting shot at 35 seconds, then 35 it shall be. If you get a great shot at 18 seconds, for me, it's not, usually not, then let it be 18 seconds. Now, to steam milk uh, for your cappuccinos and lattes, you wanna open, now it's a two hole tip, and if you notice here, if you put this out like this, okay, it kinda broadens very wide, so you, if you're making Americanos, you may need to put hold the cup here or put it here to add the water, because it does spread wide uh, on it. So I just made a little air pocket in the boiler because the boiler's filled, okay? So you have to let a little water come out, hit the steam switch, okay? That's right here. So the light, the green light, which is ready, 
when it was on, I just go to steam mode. That light comes on there. The green light went off there. Typically 30 to 45 seconds. Put that back in there. Okay. It's heating up pretty fast. As you can see, there's some power. And normally you would like to dry the cups. We have these Ilsa pitchers with uh, double spouts on them. Okay, let me touch that. There's a lot of power there for that little boiler. Okay, you can hear the machine. And let's get cooking over here. Some really good velocity. I'm lowering the pitcher. I'm keeping my hand on there. I don't use a, a thermometer. I just go by hand. And it's getting mighty hot. So now I'll shut it off. Okay. I know everyone's going to scream. You got the wet cup here. Pour the espresso in there. Okay, if you want to give someone a cheap skate cappuccino, you leave a little espresso in the cup like there and tell them they're going to get a macchiato and just give them that. Like this, they think they're getting wired, but they're really not. That's a little trick that I'll play sometimes here at First Line with uh, the staff. Well, that's the cheap man's cappuccino with very little espresso in it. Uh, again, if you want to play some dirty tricks, that's one way to do it. I got plenty of dirty tricks. Uh, too many, been in this business too long. Now for that over extracted shot, uh, this cappuccino is really, it's actually not bad. Um, again, what it comes down to, your shot may look horrible. Uh, you, it may be taking 11 to 12 seconds to come out, or it may come out in four seconds. Four, I think is a little too fast, but five to seven, the espresso usually is gonna come out pretty good as long as you have a good quality grinder, not a cheap blade grinder, not a cheap burr grinder. My rule of thumb here at First Line, when customers call or email, typically you want to have a grinder. If the machine is $1,000, you wanna have a grinder that's between 30 and 50% of the price of the machine. So if you're budgeting, that's what you need to budget for. Now, can you go a couple of dollars lower than 30% or more than, yeah, I have customers who buy a thousand dollar machine and a $1,500 grinder. I think it's too much grinder for the machine, but they're thinking two to three years, they're getting situated with the machine, they're gonna improve or get a better machine. So uh, you read a lot on the internet, people saying grinder, grinder, grinder. Yes, grinder is important, but there's also a point where you can overkill, okay? This hobby machine, very well built. I showed you the inside, showed you how it performed, even showed you a mistake in the pull. If I had to do it over, I would coarsen the grind a little bit. Uh, the grinder, which I'm not mentioning, was set up for another machine and I didn't even change it just to see how the machine works, okay? Um, I went over some of the two things I really don't like, but there's a lot to like on the hobby. And one of them, is the construction. It is, uh, I consider it a heavyweight for its compact size. A uh, little hard to get in, but I don't foresee re too many repairs on this machine. Again, just get the water from the reservoir to the boiler. And we just had it in steam mode, okay? See the steam coming out? Get water to come through. to fill from the reservoir, through the boiler, through the wand. And the steam has dissipated. Okay, it's still sputtering a little bit. Hit that button off, the steam is off, close the valve, you're ready for your next espresso. Now, if you're entertaining, you can steam your milk first, or you can make your six or eight shots of espresso first, and then steam. Just the only thing to remember, every two cups, you wanna run a little water back into the boiler, even in steam mode, just get a little water back in there because the water level drops as you're making steam. You wanna maintain 
the heating element side of, uh, within the water. If you have any questions or comments, please ask down below. You can click the link to purchase this great machine here at First Line Equipment. We do handle the warranty uh, for our customers. You can also visit the page, uh, ask questions right on the Q&A section. Please give me a thumbs up, especially if you like this color shirt, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share, share with your friends who's looking for a machine, share out there on social media. Once again, Java Jim with First Line Equipment. Thank you for watching, have a great day. And as always, coffee first, everything else second.